Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Are You Losing Crops Due to Bacterial Leaf Spot? which is brought to you by Germain Seed Technology. I'm Robin Sitberg of Meister Media Worldwide, publisher of American Vegetable Grower Magazine. Today we're going to discuss how you can reduce or eliminate bacterial leaf spot in your baby leaf Swiss chard, red beet, and coriander crops with Germain's organic seed disinfection process called ProBio Pro Go Pure. You'll also learn about other conventional seed health technologies for leafy vegetables, such as spinach and lettuce, that can help improve your crop's performance and improve yield. We'll have time for some questions and answers after the presentation. So if at any time during the presentation you'd like to ask a question, please type it in the question pane at the lower left panel of your presentation window and click Submit. Your question will go into a queue and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can at the end. So now I'd like to introduce our presenter for the webinar, Dale Krolikowski, Head of Operations and Research for Germain's California location. Dale has been working in the field of research chemistry for more than 20 years and has been at Germain since 2009. He manages the R&D team that has creative in created innovative seed technologies that improve emergence and uniformity as well as seed disinfection to reduce disease transfer to the field. In addition, Dale also manages the daily production activities and oversees the quality control department, making sure products meet high quality standards and customer expectations. So now I am pleased to turn the program over to Dale. Thank you, Robin, very much for that introduction. And welcome, everyone, to um, Jermaine's first uh, webinar, which we plan on doing a lot more throughout the next few years to help educate the growers, the dealers, the breeder producers, on the different technologies that we offer. So we're going to start off right away and just um, kind of look at an agenda of what's going on. Um, so we're going to t introduce a little bit about Germains, and we're going to also talk about seed technology and the health side. And we're going to also look at um, talking a little bit about other technologies such as um, seed disinfection. And then we're going to have a little bit of Q&A session at the end. Before we get into any of that, I'd um, like to do a little bit of audience poll. You know, let's get to know each other a little better and see what's going on. So I'm not sure how many people know much about Germains. Germains has been um, working in seed technology for over over 145 years. Started with a Swiss immigrant, Eugene Germains, back in 1870, who moved out to California, and um, been a, a lot of activity in the area since that time. You know, Germains has been um, doing a lot of different technology. And we were one of the first people to actually pellet seed in the U.S. market back in the 1950s. We started this Gilroy site back in 1980, and um, that's where we really expanded into vegetable seed treatments in, into our portfolio and kind of diversified off a little bit from just sugar beet, which was, which was one of the primary things that we were focusing on. In the 1990s, we were purchased by Associated British Foods, which is one of the fourth largest food companies in the world. We occupy several different locations throughout the world, and we have four labs dedicated to R&D worldwide. And most importantly, we, have, you know, we work with about 250 different seed dealers and breeders in the U.S. Our Gilroy site, we focus mainly on vegetable species, and we pretty much treat any vegetable species that you can think of. Throughout the world, you know, when we're looking at different ag sectors, you know, vegetables is a primary um, technology sector for Germains. We do also some work in the Netherlands and stuff on Holland, uh, Holland on uh, flowers. Uh, we work on sugar beets in the U.S. as well as in the U.K., and a little bit more work on field crops. When you look at seed technology, you know, there are so many different things that can happen on the seed. You know, when you look at seed itself, you can prime seed, you can improve uniformity and speed of emergence when you prime seed. 
you can break photodormancy or thermodormancy by priming seed. You can then look at seed-borne diseases, um, such as fusarium or stemphilium and, and different things like that, and you can disinfect the seed, not only just on the seed coat, but down into the pericarp and, and remove seed-borne pathogens. Then you can go ahead and pellet seed and make it easy to plant. But pellets these days are a lot more than just a, a planting mechanism. A pellet is a, is, a, is a transport mechanism to hold either biologicals or nutrients close to the seed or ag chemicals. And that's where film coating comes in as well, you know, putting um, uh, a protective layer of, of ag chemicals around the exterior of the pellet that will then protect your seed against soil-borne diseases. Today's focus, we're going to primarily just talk about our health program. And in our health program, we're really looking at seed-borne diseases and improved plant establishment. So we're going to look at two different areas of expertise. And the first is going to be all around seed disinfection, and the second is going to be around micronutrients. Before we get into that a little bit, I'd like to do a second audience poll and learn a little bit more about your experience with seed-borne diseases. So if you don't mind, please take a few minutes and, and answer some of the questions. So when it comes to seed borne diseases, as you're taking this poll, you know, there's a lot of different things that, that can happen. Um, you know, during the maturation of the seed on the stalk, um, pathogenic fungi can grow up on your seed, bacterial diseases can enhance on the seed, and a lot of it's climactic, you know, in nature, where there's wet, rainy seasons right around the time of harvest that uh, impact seed borne diseases, and it changes from year to year. So moving down from the pole, we're going to talk a little bit about um, seed disinfection. There's a variety of different ways to disinfect seed. It can be done organically or conventionally. We focus on, um, on that different types of technology in order to meet different sectors of the market. Um, eradicating a, a range of seed-borne pathogens is, is primarily our target. Trying to create disease-free seed that once you plant in the soil won't transfer diseases back into your field. That's really an important part of breaking a life cycle of any of these pathogens. Um, if you take the time and the money and the effort to fumigate after a certain species of growth, why would you want to go in and plant dirty seed and after that? You can, you, when you have options that where you can disinfect and have clean, healthy seed, One of the primary things that um, we have been focusing on for the last couple of years is bacterial leaf spot. It's such a fast spreading bacterium, and, you know, it's spread by wind, water, and other modes, and it can really devastate your crops. It's, um, it's estimated that over 64% of Swiss chard and coriander seed in the U.S. Is, is infected with bacterial leaf spot. You know, this um, this disease is is deeply rooted. We see seed lots of high infection. And um, it's unfortunate for the breeder producer of that seed. If he cannot sell that, that seed to somebody because it's got a high level of infection, they'll end up losing that seed and having it destroyed, or they'll sell it off at a much lower margin. And we're trying to look for technologies that prevent those kinds of financial losses. You know, there are a lot of organic challenges out there. Um, trying to disinfect seed conventionally can be a little bit easier of a task, but when you're trying to follow the National Organic Program rules, um, it, there, there's a lot of challenges in growing organic production. Harvesting clean, pathogenic, pathogen-free seed is always a difficult task. You know, and, and we appreciate out there that um, everybody who's breeding and producing seed has those challenges. And when um, they do still come down with diseases like bacterial leaf spot, we want to be available to offer treatments that will then remove those from the seed and give you a much better crop. When you do remove seed-borne inoculum, it's 
a good way, once again, of trying to keep your soil cleaner and prevent further outbreaks that happen then in the future. A couple of years back, when we were um, contacting with another uh, different customer, they had inquired that they had like a, about 100,000 pounds of Swiss chard that was infected with bacterial leaf spot. They asked Remains if we could come up with a solution to that, and they wanted an organic solution. The R&D team um, worked pretty hard with this partnership to come up with a, a really, really clever solution where we could treat hundreds of thousands of pounds of Swiss chard annually to remove seed-borne bacterial leaf spot. And that's the process that we now have branded out as um, ProBioGopier. It's a fully certified organic process through our um, certifying agent, ASCO. So ProBioGopier is all developed to support the organic grower. And what is this actually? Once again, it's, 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 a, it's a technology that's removed seed-borne pathogens, Pseudomonas, from Swiss chard and red beet, and um, also from coriander. And it's quite effective. You know, bacterial leaf spots so fast and spreads so easily, um, you've got to really look at the inoculum levels that you have on your seed. We've had a lot of success in, in red beet, Swiss chard, and coriander. When you look at um, on, on an average of, of 10 red beet lots, and, you know, a lot meaning like 40,000 pounds of seed, um, inoculum levels can be very, very high. In this case, something like, uh, you know, 24,000 CFUs of, of bacteria per milliliter of um, extractant that we use to plate out. Swiss chard, we've seen lots as high as, high as 150, 300,000 CFUs of bacterial counts. And once again, we, we've treated over 47 lots and you know hundreds of thousands of pounds of Swiss chard with this method. You can see we're quite effective at reducing seed-borne levels of binoculum well down below um, any levels that would then transmit to a disease outbreak in the field. The same goes for, for coriander, where we've had great success on, on several large lots. So the, so the overall benefits of ProBioGopier is a significant reduction of Pseudomonas on Swiss chard, red beet, and coriander seeds. Being a, a totally certified NOP process, so it's all organic and approved by the USDA, and it's, it's very good at helping to prevent transfer of organisms and, um, onto other crops and into the field. We haven't stopped working on ProBioGopier. The R&D team continues to look at its ability to treat other species. And currently, we've been working on, on kale for an example of how we control bacterial leaf spot on kale. So with a um, little bit about uh, Bacterial leaf spot and all done. How about another audience poll and let's ask a couple of questions about spinach. You know, spinach is certainly a huge crop in California and um, grown both conventionally and organically. There's a, a lot of activity going on on spinach these days. Germaine's has been working on spinach for at least um, seven or eight years ever since I, I joined the team here in the U.S. And one of the first things we, we did was when we were visiting cow leafy green meetings and um, CSA meetings and the like, we always heard that um, there was a lot of issues about seed-borne pathogens on spinach and that there was a, a need to have something to clean up the seed. So we came up with a product that we call GoPeer. It's a conventional treatment. GoPeer is, is really a, a combination of fungicides that we apply to the seeds, and they inhibit the growth of the seed-borne um, pathogens. Our target initially was verticillium. Even though the spread of verticillium into the soil is a, um, is, is a chain event where we know verticillium does not damage spinach as it's grown. It does um, connect, contaminate lettuce and then hurts, um, has some financial losses on the lettuce side of things. Gopier was designed to eradicate um, verticillium on spinach, stemphilium, cladosporium, alternaria, and um, several other 
seed-borne pathogens on spinach. One of the best advantages of, of <coughs> gopier is that it is also good at protecting the seed against soil pathogens, such as fusarium and, and bryozoctonia. You can see as this example, uh, you know, some of the plates that we grow out of, of um, raw seed on the, on the right, the control, versus gopier disinfected seed. This is after 21 days of incubation, and you can see clearly that um, uh, the level of efficacy of the gopier treatment. Poll number three. Let's, let's talk a little bit about lettuce in a few minutes. So let's take a poll and, and ask some questions about lettuce. All right, so when it comes to lettuce and seed health, you know, there's a couple of different things out there that um, could really help and benefit a grower in improving the overall growth and, and um, plant yields. One of those is the use of micronutrients as a seed coating to improve nutrient uptake of that early emerging radical right as it's starting to come out into the soil. That enhanced root development is super important, um, helps to improve root mass, and ultimately leads to a better yield potential. Um, right now, our health line of micronutrient products are only for conventional growers at this point, but we're constantly working in the background to try to develop some organic solutions to this as well. Our micronutrient product that we sell is called GoSeed. Once again, strictly for conventional growers. If we look at how go seed performs, specifically on desert lettuce, as you're adding micronutrients to that seed, you're really helping to overcome some of the stresses that are involved in planting at such high temperature conditions in the desert. If we compare emergence counts just a few days after planting, of seed that lettuce seeds that's been treated with go seed versus some of our other conventional products, you'll see the, the orange bars where oxy E go seed is statistically higher in the plant population, regardless of what pellet type is being used. So it's it it is an application of that micronutrient which is allowing that early root development to help enhance the growth of the plant. You can see that transfer right out from uh, emergence into yield. If you look at the plot on the right, the go seed treated plot, there's much fuller, more uniform plant. And it's all because of that earlier plant root development and foliar development um, due to enhanced nutrient uptake versus the control plot where there's missing spaces, um, much smaller, less uniform plants. So if, then, if we take that trial all the way into harvest, and this is where the value comes in with the seed treatment. You're, you're adding a cost to the seed by getting it pelleted, primed, adding a micronutrient. And that, that has to return you something. And in the case of go seed, we measure the average number of boxes per acre that are produced because of the actual treatment. And you can see, looking across the board with the different varieties, there's an enhanced number of boxes per acre on the go seed trials. It's just a, a, a good indication that how a seed treatment cannot always just be looked at at, at, a, at a cost. 
you know, there's a value that's created from that. And Jermaine's, we work really hard to demonstrate that across um, all of our products. If we transfer just from that uh, that picture earlier and, and go and look at the actual, what we call um, harvestable yield effect of, of using go seed, you know, the grower won't have to go back and, and um, do a second harvest on this field. He can just disk in now because he's achieved a, a much higher yield than he has on his control crop. So once again, that's a value, that's a cost savings, of not having to double pick, not having to go in and, and hire a crew a second time or anything like that. We've seen the goat seed technology work not only in the desert under those heat stress conditions, but we've seen successful trials as well all throughout the Salinas Valley growing areas. The great part about go seed, we know that it, it does help root performance as well as foliar performance. And we take that and start looking at other species such as parsnip and carrots and onions and um, and just see a much better uniform root mass development, a much better growth around the stock of, of emerging plants. And that is just all transferring into a higher value product for the end user. We are currently looking at go seed and how it affects foliar development on items such as peppers. Um, we've seen a great improvement based upon the different rates of the materials that we apply, where you can see an improvement in foliar mass, more flowering, which in turn has been turning into more, more pepper yield and protection against sunburn of, of peppers, uh, especially jalapenos is super important. So in summary, you know, we talked a little bit about Jermaine's, trying to introduce you a little bit to what we do and some of the technologies that we offer. We have been in service for over 145 years, and we continue to look for novel ways to treat seed, all sorts of different species. Our seed health technologies is just one of our platforms that we're focusing on in today's webinar, but there's other platforms that we want to introduce later on, such as our our priming technologies, our pellet technologies, film coat technologies, et cetera. But the health technologies is all around reducing, eradicating seed-borne pathogens, giving you that clean seed, disease-free, healthy seed, so that it gives the best start that it can right from the beginning. Improving um, nutrient uptake is super important to growers. Hopefully you can use less fertilizer. If you go ahead and start off with a micronutrient up front, and take advantage of the fertilizer that you already have in your existing soils. You can get an improvement in vigor, improvement in root mass, and those things go back down to the end of having a more harvestable yield, and that is what everybody's looking for, is, the, is you know, getting a good crop towards the end. So that's... That's the beauty of, of some of these seed technologies. It's not just an uh, input cost that you're facing, but there's added value in the, in the creation of value here. And there's a, there's a lot to offer between the different things like seed health and priming where, uh, you, where you definitely see an increase in value. So in summary, you know, if you're interested in, in trying any of our seed treatments, please contact your local dealer. If you want more information about Jermaine's, you can visit our website at germains.com. And I think with that, we're going to go into a question mode and see if there's any questions out there or comments. Thank you, Dale. <clears throat> We'd now like to open the floor for questions. We've already gotten quite a few. Um, seems like there's a lot of interest in this technology. So the first one is, um, is the ProBio technology available for licensing, or is the treatment only done at Jermaine's? And the second part of the question is, is it a, a technology for equipment or an organic treatment, like steeping or coating with slurry? So the, the first part to that is uh, that could be discussed on an individual basis. Um, we would be opening um, with the key partners. We would look at licensing off technology to key partners. And as for how the process is run, that is a proprietary information. I wouldn't share anything more than what I have about that. Um, but once again, if you're interested in licensing, you can contact us directly, and we can talk about that. Okay. 
Uh, another question is, for many markets, registration is necessary for this type of seed treatment. So um, the viewer wants to know, for which countries have these treatments been approved? That's, that's a good question. Um, right now, GOPIR has been and treated and approved in the U.S. Um, when it comes to the GOSEED technology, um, that, is, that is currently being registered in Mexico for use in Mexico on, on peppers and different species as well. And then the, um, the other GOPIR technology is all being done on, um, is approved in California and Arizona and strictly the U.S. But we can talk about registering these products internationally as well. And um, there were my sites in Holland and the U.K. Okay. Um, do you sell directly to growers, or do you, you have to order um, through the seed dealer? Did I say, do you sell directly to growers? I'm sorry, did I say orders? <laughs> do you sell directly to growers, or does it have to be ordered through the dealer? Um, we would prefer that it would work through dealers. Okay, okay. Uh, another viewer uh, wants to know, are you not worried about killing off beneficial microorganisms when trying to terminate the plant pathogens? So how does it work with beneficials? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, there's a lot of science around that. And, um, you know, certainly we know on seed there's some beneficial pathogens or beneficial organisms, I should say. And um, there is that balance. Um, when we're... You know, we're we're really targeting fairly aggressive diseases, and so our treatments will no doubt eradicate um, almost all pathogens and organisms on seed. We like to counter that with some of our stack technologies, where we do have other biologicals that we can offer to put back onto seed to then help benefit the growth after that. But that was a great question. Okay. Uh, what this is the next question? What is the CFU per milliliter in the BLS charts? I guess they're looking for clarification, so, maybe on. Sure, sure, and that is, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion these days about testing methods and protocols that are being used, and in this case, it's, um, you know, we'll take uh, a 30,000 seed sample, split it up into 10 different. Um, or I'm sorry, three different reps of 10,000 seeds. From there, we'll add an, an aliquot of extraction liquid. So you get a, um, a controlled amount of aliquot, and you then plate that out, and you count the colony forming units. So for 10,000 seeds, there's um, like 150 milliliters of solution that's used, and then you you're, so that is your standard baseline. That's how you're coming up with the, the, uh, a protocol that says for X number of seeds, it's X number of mils of diluent that is then plated out in the colony units then calculated off of that. Okay. Okay, good. Um, do you have an organic disinfecting treatment for Botrytis allii on onion seed? Um for botrytis on onion, not an organic one that we have tested out with great detail, no. Okay, okay. But that um, is something, you know, we're, we're always looking to develop if there's a big interest. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Um, the next question then is what sort of effect do these treatments have on the shelf life of the seed? That's always a big concern, no question about it. Um, we always are looking to develop a seed treatment that does not damage shelf life over a long period of time. ProBioGopier, for example, the disinfection, um, we have over two years of shelf life data without any reduction in germination. The same goes with the, um, the GoSeed and the GoPure. Um, I, I try very hard not to deliver anything to my commercial team that doesn't have at least a six-month um, you know, positive shelf life. Okay. This is obviously from someone uh, experiencing downy mildew on their spinach, and they'd like to know if GoPure has any effect on that. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the holy <laughs> grail one, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, we, 
we we work quite hard with the USDA here, Steve Klosterman and some of these guys, and looking at all sorts of different seed treatments on uh, against downy mildew. And the more and more that um, Dr. Klosterman shows that there are viable spores alive on seed, um, we are working very closely with him to develop our seed treatments to make sure that we can make those spores non-viable. Um, right now, I would say with the conventional treatment, no, that um, we do not know whether that really makes them non-viable. We've had some really decent success with some organic type um, disinfection treatments on spinach that we're continuing to develop. Okay. Uh, another viewer would like to know what is the technical basis of the seed disinfection, both conventional and organic? I don't know if she's technical asking basis. again about that technology. Yeah, that's um, that's kind of our, our proprietary technology on how we develop those things. Okay. All right, we'll go on to the next question. It says, uh, I'm trying to understand the treatment ProBio Go Pure, as you explained. Does this mean we're dealing here with a combination of fungicides and probiotics? Everybody wants to um, know what's in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, um, you know. To be honest, when we developed ProBioGoPure, we we knew we needed a, a very simple system that could do large volumes because you know our customer, like I said, started off with a hundred thousand pounds, so um, it it became. Um, you know, part technology, having the infrastructure around sugar beet technology was one of the big things that helped us to be successful with ProBioGopier. So it's part having large scale of equipment and then coming up with the formulation and the solution around that on how we treat the seed. That that um, was the key. And like I said, that's proprietary to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there a disinfection for PS core and coriander? So th is that um, Pseudomonas and coriander? Okay, and probably. Yes. They, they wrote PS yes. and okay, yeah, probably. Yes, that would be that would still be our probiogopier technology. Okay, so that works on that. Okay. Um, has the seed disinfection technology been tested and evaluated independently? Is the next question. Um, yeah, it actually has in, in a lot of cases. Um, you know, our one through our customers, um, two through um, several outside labs where we validate the success of our treatments through outside labs and get certified analysis of the seed pathogens before and after the seed has been treated. Okay. Um, I'd like to remind everyone they can still um, submit questions. We have a bit of time, so if if you um, have anything more you'd like to ask. Um, in the meantime, we've got another one that uh, they want to know, um, what about work in transplant production in plant houses? Yeah, it's, um, that's super critical for sure. We, we definitely are wanting to do more and more work around that area and, and ensure that um, the seed going into the plant house is clean. Um, you know, the limitation of any kind of disinfection is the ability to test. And uh, so even in these cases where we're testing 30,000 seeds out of a lot and we're showing negative results, we always have to remember that's 30,000 seeds out of a lot of, you know, of 400,000 pounds or something like that. Um, but we're, we definitely are aware that um, the need to have really strong treatments going into greenhouses and um, and and we're targeting our technologies to be that effective. Okay. Uh, another viewer would like to know: Can ProBio Go Pure be used to disinfect other species besides Swiss chard, red beets, and coriander? So we we have done some work on kale, and um, and we've shown some success on kale. Uh, we struggle a little bit on kale in terms of um, seed count and. And we prefer to see seed lots that are below 125,000 seeds per pound when it comes to kale. Um, we are looking at BioGopure when it comes to other species, um, other brassicas for sure, and um, things like that to try to keep offering new, new organic solutions to the market. Okay. Um, another viewer would like to know where they can get their seed tested for seed-borne pathogens. 
Do you have recommendations for that? Um, you know, just about any any lab out there, Eurofins, FDA Eurofins, um, California Seed and Plant Lab, um, both of those do a very, very nice job. Um, Iowa State University is also offering uh, a lot of seed-borne pathogen testing, and they do a very good job. And, of course, Iowa State is, is um, the university the, uh, that sets a lot of the standard methods and protocols out there, so they're always a good, a good source to go to first. That's great. Okay. We have a, a question from Germany. Um, they would like to know which of the treatments presented today are available in the EU. Um, the, we could do ProBioGopier in, in our UK factories. So that's, that would be available in, the, in Europe. Okay. That's good. Okay. And it looks like um, yeah, the last question, which was actually in the middle, how, how can I order this product? And you had already mentioned through your dealer, but is there any other anything else you want to um, add to that? The dealer would be our first choice, or you could contact one of our sales team direct. All right. Um, well, that wraps up our webinar, I, and I think everybody got their questions answered. But if some, if we missed one somehow, um, the folks at Germains will follow up with you. And we appreciate you attending. Um, as a reminder, an on-demand version of this webinar will be available um, shortly after this, by this afternoon. Uh, it takes a little time to process. And you can find the link at growingproduce.com forward slash webinars, or you can just log in using the registration uh, link that you used to get on today. So thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you to Germain Seed Technology for sharing this information with us. Great. Thanks, everyone, very much. Okay, we're off.